Hey guys, welcome to my new video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to edit this bathtub motor scene from start to finish. Now like I said in the previous tutorial I've been getting a lot of questions on two photos in particular, this being one of them and this car photo being the other. Now I did a tutorial on how to edit that so if you're interested in finding out I'll put an annotation and a link in the description and you can check that out there. I also got a new microphone so my voice might sound a bit different, might sound a bit better. Let me know how it sounds, I'll probably still have to play around with it a bit to get better audio, but yeah. So let's jump right into it. This is going to be pretty long, so it's going to not be that in depth, but I'm going to be giving you the basic ideas on how I got to the final product from here. Okay, so to start things off, we're going to drop the exposure down almost half a stop to 0 0.3, and we're going to bring up the contrast to about 50. Now what we're going to do is go down to shadows, bring that up to about 20, bring down the whites to about negative 30, and then bring up the blacks to about 35 to get some details out of the shadows. Okay, now the next slider is clarity. Now this is going to make the biggest difference on this photo. And I'm using Lightroom 4. If you're using Lightroom 3, there might be a slightly different effect from clarity. So you might not get this kind of effect, but on this specific image, if you watch the blood on the bathtub as well as the overall image, the difference is really dramatic and really huge. So as we bring this up to 100, you can see that just totally transformed the photo and made it a whole lot better. So you can see the before there and the after. It just makes everything look a whole lot better in this specific photo. And that's pretty much where most of this photo's look comes from, just that one slider. Okay, now moving down to vibrance, we're going to drop that to about negative 30 to slightly desaturate the image. We're going to change our tone curves to about medium contrast. And we're going to skip hue saturation, luminance, split toning, and we're going to go down to detail. So like in the last video, we're going to use that standard preset I learned from SLR Lounge, so 70, 1.5, 10 and 30. Now we're going to bring our noise reduction up to about 20 to eliminate some of that noise since this was shot uh, at a decently high ISO. Okay, now moving down to lens corrections, we're going to actually go to the profile tab here, click enable profile corrections, and you can see that since I shot this at 16 millimeters on a 5D Mark III, which is a full frame camera, it's really wide, so there's quite a bit of correction happening. We're going to remove chromatic aberrations and we're going to go to the manual tab next. Now here we're going to change the vertical slider and you can see what's going to happen. If we look at this now you can see the vertical lines kind of look like they're leaning back a little bit. As we bring this down you can see they're kind of straightening up. Now a few tutorials ago I did show you how to do this in Photoshop so you can do that if you prefer. Otherwise the final outcome is pretty similar regardless. Okay, now moving down to lens vignetting, we're going to drop this to about negative 60 and then the midpoint to about 30. So that's looking pretty good there, and that's all for our adjustments. Now we're going to move on to our adjustment brushes. So we're going to click this new button here, and the first thing we're going to do is uh, fix up the top of her hair and her arm here. Now you can see it's in dark shadow here and there's not much detail happening, so we're going to pretty much create a bit more interest in these areas. So to start things off, we're going to change our contrast to 20 our highlights to 30, our shadows to 10, our clarity to 30, and our saturation to 10, and our sharpness to about 20. And now all we're going to do is get a decently sized brush by using our scroll wheel here, and just painting in over the top of her hair. Now what we're going to do is press Alt on our keyboard to bring up the eraser, and pretty much feather this out a little bit so it's not as noticeable. Alright, now what we're going to do is click this new tab here to create another adjustment brush. And this time we're going to bring up our exposure by about one stop. So just about one. We're going to actually drop our contrast by negative 40. And that is all we're going to change. We're just going to double click the rest of the words to uh, reset them to default. Alright, so this time we're going to use those settings and paint over the top of her hair here. As well as all down her arm. And then we're going to press Z, zoom in, hold Alt again, and pretty much feather this out like we did with the last adjustment brush. And the reason we do this is just so the effect isn't as noticeable, and it kind of gradually fades out instead of, you know, seeing these harsh lines that we see once we zoom in. And then we can create quite a big one and just feather out over here and a little bit on top of her hair. 
Okay, now we're going to add one more adjustment brush and you can see once we raise the clarity up this towel on the right here looks really dark contrasty and it's kind of a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to reset everything and pull the clarity down to about negative 70 or so and just paint over this towel. And after we've done that, that is all that we're going to do in Lightroom and the rest is going to be done in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm just going to pause this recording and restart it once we're back into Photoshop. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop CS5 and of course this will be uh, easily translatable into CS3, 4, 6, whatever you're using. It's all pretty much the same on what we're doing. And the first thing we notice is this grey gap down here from where we fixed the distortion. Uh, now on the final version that you would have seen in my video or on uh, my YouTube channel or whatever you saw it on, uh, what I did to fix this was use the magic wand tool and clicked and you can see it highlights that area plus some parts on the wall but I of course fixed that and then went up to edit, fill and content aware and Photoshop will automatically try and figure out uh, what it's meant to look like past those points and automatically fill it in with whatever it thinks is meant to go there. Now this is more accurate if you work in uh, smaller sections so if you do go that way about uh, fixing this distortion use small sections and take your time and it'll end up working a whole lot better but just for this tutorial sake I'm not going to worry about that and I'm just simply going to crop above it like so and there we go alright so we pretty much only have one thing to do in Photoshop and that is to create a new layer press B to bring up our brush tool make it really big depending on how big you want that light source to glow and I've also done a tutorial on this so I pretty much want this window to glow a little bit so I'm just going to click twice right in the middle and you can see we're getting that really bright light look uh, but you can still see some of the details through the windows and to fix this what we're going to do is create a new adjustment layer by going down to here clicking curves and just dragging up this one side and you can see what's happening to the window now what we're going to do is set our primary color here to black and hold the alt key and press backspace to fill in the entire layer now we're going to change it back to white reduce our brush size and pretty much just paint over the window. Now the reason I did it that way is because black pretty much hides the mask and white makes the mask visible so if we just fill the whole layer with black nothing will be affected by the mask and then we just paint over the small section we need in white. And I'm just doing a really rough job just so this tutorial isn't too long. Then we can change it back to black and just you know tidy up these edges like that and then enable our light source layer again and there we go we have the finished image pretty much so pretty huge transformation again you can check out how I edited these car photos if you're curious on that you can also see my photography with the video link I'll put on the screen now and you can also see it on my DeviantArt you can see the full res photos with the link in the description so I hope that helped be sure to subscribe and like the video if you liked it there'll be more tutorials coming and I will see you in the next video goodbye